Hi everyone, I'm Adrienne Everhart. I am a feminine energy therapist. I am also a coach for women. I teach you how to get in touch with your feminine energy and reconnect to the man you love in your life, fix your relationship, or call forth the man you're meant to be with. Now, if you're new to my channel, please take a moment and hit subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I do appreciate your support with subscribing and liking my video. So let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get your soft, feminine energy back. I'm gonna teach you how to get it back in your life. I'm gonna teach you where it went and why it probably went away and talk about how to get it back into your life so that the man around you can get activated in his masculine energy. So one of the reasons a lot of men walk away is that they actually don't feel like a man anymore. Now it's not our job to make a guy feel like a man, all right? But if we are in our masculine energy and the man isn't getting that um, you know, desire or impulse, he's not feeling that feminine energy from us, he actually ends up competing with us. And I talk about how we can be like two rams just because there's only one alpha. There's only one alpha. And a lot of times it is the woman in the relationship who is the alpha. Um, she has the ultimate say and things like that. Now, I start off the beginning of this video with a little bit of theory, and then we go into Q&A. Now, make sure you stick around. I've actually saved my strongest piece for the end. Q&A, I always take Q&A right out of the stream. However, if you want to contribute to Super Chat, that's completely up to you. But if you do, it does get you bumped up in queue. I give you priority, all right? So let's get started. Uh, first, let's talk about where did your feminine energy go <laughs> and, and why do you need it? Is it your job to make a guy feel like a man, you know, and do you have to act like this girl? And I just want to clear up some of those misconceptions or beliefs that you might have about feminine energy. So, so at one point you did feel like a girl, you were in touch with your inner girl. It may have left when you were very, very young. Um, usually it happens at the moment we realize our survival, you know, our survival as a woman uh, or as a human on this planet, we have to be tough and strong and resilient and very smart. And at the same time, we want to have a relationship with a man and we end up coming home and to that relationship with the man with the same qualities we're using to survive. So some of your stifled feminine energy is usually because you have been wounded by a man. You or your mother were wounded by masculine energy and for survival, your inner boy took over. He had to take over for you to survive. Okay? So Last I heard, you know, men are stronger than us. They can sometimes have a lot more power than us. And women all the time are, you know, there's a lot of abuse from men. There's a lot of verbal abuse. There's a lot of abandonment by men. Today is Father's Day. And it is not the most popular holiday. You know, I hope in your world it is. But in a lot of cases, it isn't. Because a lot of men just skip out on that part because there's something wrong and something started to go wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. I think some guys have skipped town for all sorts of reasons in life throughout history, but I believe when a man stops feeling like a man, he stops and will walk away from a loving family and go somewhere else so that he feels like a man again. And we're going to talk about that today. So some uh, symptoms of a stifled inner girl are the following. You feel you can't say what you feel. There's this thing that's like, I know what I'm really feeling, but I'm going to say this instead. Okay? So when you start having to think your way through life and you're having to think what to say, you're there. That's boy energy. That's thinking. All right? Um, now, another one is when you do or say what you feel to a man, okay, and he gives you negative reactions. He, he gets angry at you. He gets disappointed at you. He gets upset. 
and you have this, this expectation that he's supposed to respond a certain way, that's your boy taking over. And that's a big one in I Heart Love Academy. It is a uh, private group I have on Facebook and the link should be below uh, eventually. But we get upset that they're not doing what we want them to be doing. That's controlling, that's masculine energy. You're the manager at the job, you're the boss. You see how this works, okay? Another one is you'll feel trapped and sometimes furious. Really, I notice there's a lot of like uh, anger. You feel a bit like a victim and you end up taking that anger out on others and yourself because of what men have done to you. So we end up getting mad at the people we actually love or we end up being bad to ourselves because this man is not in our life or that love we want is not in our life. We take it out on ourselves. We take it out on people around us. And it's really um, it's something that happens where your girl goes away, boy is in charge. You see, boy crushes everything. If you, we were playing rock, paper, scissors, like boy would be the rock, I guess. I don't know, whichever one's stronger. Uh, because boy can just trump all, okay? Um, think of feminine energy as creation, as creation, as making things happen. If you are exhausted, anxious, suffer from anxiety, you have this never ending list of what it's gonna take to get you happy to a happy place. Your dreams are just not possible. Things just don't work out for you. There's a good chance you're just stuck in boy energy and your, your girl is, is stifled, okay? And then last one is you might be apathetic. You might have a lot of thoughts of revenge. You might be stuck in kind of this victim mindset or a, a, a mindset of like, I need to have justice to be happy. I need justice. And that is absolutely masculine energy. And you could be doing this with the women in your life, your mother, your, your father, a, a man, your children, anyone. You could be stuck in this justice mode so much so that the relationship you're building won't exist because you're stuck in this place of victim and justice mode, okay? So we talked a little bit about where did it go. At some point, your boy got rewarded. So for me, this happened one day. I talk about I was at the zoo and I fell down and I really scraped my knee bad. And I immediately wanted to break into tears. The pain was horrible, but I held on to it because I didn't want my dad to get mad at me at the zoo for crying, okay? Because I knew once my dad got mad, the day went to shit, you know? And so I really held it in because I wanted to enjoy the zoo and we had just gotten there. And my mom and dad said, you are so mature. You didn't even cry. Your knee is really skinned up. And then my mom was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm just holding back this tears. And I realized I got all this reward for holding onto my emotions. And so it continued to happen. People would hurt me. People would, uh, Unfortunately, it was a, I, I was in a horrible part of the country for the school system, and teachers would be very, very mean. Some educators would not be uh, good, and I would never let them see me cry, which made them want to break me even more. And you know what I did? I got even tougher. I outsmarted them. I could, I was, I was sometimes smarter than my teachers, which really ticked them off, you know? So, Things like this <laughs> began to follow me around in life until I became even in employment. If I was working with a woman who was my manager, I would outshine her. It was ruining my relationships everywhere I went because I wasn't allowing myself to be a girl and just feel. And then when I did have men in my life, they were feminine energy men who I adored. But eventually, I wanted that masculine energy guy. And girls, you know what I'm talking about, okay? You know what I'm talking about, okay? So let's, let's talk about how either being a victim or just learning how to make it in this world or you're forced in survival, how you have lost your girl, now let's get it back. Let's get back your feminine energy. No matter who has hurt you, no matter how hard you've had to work in your life, 
whatever sacrifices you have made, whatever your relationship past says, or the men that you have attracted in the past, it does not matter. You are here with me today. We are gonna get your feminine energy back on track, okay? So I'm gonna teach you some techniques to do this. Now, I go deeper into all of this in my programs. I have an ebook called 500 Ways to Talk to a Man, which is great to have on your phone. It's good to learn how to speak from your body, which is where men connect. I have an ABCs to Get In Back program. I have Femme Tools for Dating Girls if you're new to dating and you don't know how to do this and you're used to doing it the old way. Get Femme Tools for Dating. And I have New Man Manifesto. I have Femme Tools for a Relationship. Go check out my website, the link will be below, and learn about some of my programs and self-study. Okay. Now, let's get your feminine energy back. Let's get that softness back. That's what men crave. This is what works in our relationships. It's authentic. We're not lying. We don't have to be nervous and anxious and always up in our head, wondering what to say or do. We're gonna go to this comfortable, authentic place of this is who I am and it's very authentic. And you'll be surprised how things in your life and relationships in your life begin to work out and connect. A compliment I get a lot in my feedback is that I'm authentic that I'm just, this is who I am. I'm not pretending to be someone else for you. And that's feminine energy. It is just a truthfulness. I tell everyone this is the most honest work you will ever do in your life. And the most rewarding part, you get to build it with a man. You get to build this wonderful relationship with a man, fix your marriage, whatever it may be, okay? So let's start off with my number one, and this is values and boundaries. If, if you do not know what your values are, if you do not know what your boundaries are, you will attract people who are aware that you don't know what your boundaries are because they're gonna come right in and they're gonna push them to the limit. If you don't know what your values are, you are gonna attract men who are like, this woman doesn't know her value or her values. You'll attract those people to you because you don't even know. So, so much of, so many women want a high quality man. They want a high value man or they want to fix their marriage and fix their relationship. And I start with how you feel. And most women don't even know how they feel. They're so busy up here plotting, planning, trying to figure it out. We have to get you back in your body and find out what are your values? What are your boundaries? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. How do you like to be treated? How do you want your children to be treated? No lie, are you okay with somebody hitting your kid? Hitting your dog? Hitting you? Let's start there, all right? Are you okay with a guy who's there for one week and he's gone for two? He calls you one night, you don't hear from him for another two weeks. Are you okay with that treatment? Are you okay that he looks at other women while he's with you? Are you, are you good with that stuff? No, you gotta know your values. You gotta know what it is you desire. Are you, are you okay with a guy who yells and sh shouts and screams and whenever he feels like it? So I'm telling you all the deep, dark stuff because you can work yourself backwards from there, all right? Um, money, are you, are you okay with a guy who's dead broke? Are you okay with a guy who never wants to pay for dinner or rarely has ever paid or invested in you or your children? Are you okay with that? This doesn't mean one of your values has to be, I want a man who's gonna pay my way all the time, or I want a man who can walk a tightrope and never get mad. That's not realistic. We're gonna talk about that more. Lifestyle. Does he have a lifestyle that is in alignment with yours? I have a lot of powerful dynamite women that I coach, and a lot of them are with men who are truck drivers, plumbers. I think plumber is a fantastic career. <laughs> or, or, or some other, and, and you know, and they're like doctors and attorneys and high-powered women. So is your lifestyle in alignment? Your careers may not be in alignment. Your education may not be in alignment. Is that really what makes people love each other? 
I think it has to do a little bit more with your lifestyle. One of the things that made me crazy about my husband, Jeff, was how well he loved and took care of animals. I had, that was top on my list. Because if he could love and take care of a cat, I know he's going to love and take care of me. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, we're talking about values and your boundaries. Can you say no? That's a value. That's a boundary. Do you go around helping everyone to the point of exhaustion that you can't help yourself? You don't get to the gym. You don't take care of yourself. You don't have quiet time alone. So boundaries can involve a lot of things. And a big one is sex. And a big one is relationship needs. But we're going to talk more about that because a lot of people are like, I need this all the time to feel okay. We're going to talk about that. Okay, we're gonna talk about that because we wanna be realistic. We wanna be fair. We don't want to have, you know, we don't wanna have our expectations get so high that we live in the place of disappointment because that would be boy energy where it's like you haven't done what I needed you to do for me, okay? <laughs> so I hope this is making sense to you all. Boundaries and values, you got to know them. You got to write them down if you don't know them. I tell everyone, I have an ebook in my VIP library. Now, VIP library comes with any program of mine you purchase, not 500 ways, only with my programs. I have a little ebook in there called Sex, Sex, Sex. And I go through every single if then scenario that can happen with sex to get you in alignment with your boundaries. And that's really what you have to do. If I go on a date with a guy, first date, and he says, split the bill, what's your boundary with that? What's your value with that? You gotta know, you gotta be prepared what to say. So that's the good thing about 500 Ways to Talk to a Man ebook, is that I kinda give you some ideas to get going on how to start practicing this with men. You don't want to wait until you have finally the guy your dreams in your life and then practice on him. You want to practice on these other men. You're five. You're quantum date five. I talk about that, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Healthy relationships with unconditional love. Do you girls have healthy relationships with other women, with other people in your life healthy relationships where you can get unconditional love because here's the thing. Unconditional love is, you know, kind of rare. That means, you know, total positive regard. You are just unconditionally loving that person. If a man loves you based on conditions, there's a problem. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel good to you. So I want you to just make sure you have other people in your life who love you and you have relationships that you, if you don't have them, join a church, volunteer somewhere, go to I Heart Love Academy, make some girlfriends, begin to have people in your life that you can lean on one another and have love and supportive relationships, all right? The big thing we don't want to do is be seeking love from a man out, you know, outside of us when inside we don't, we don't love, we, we're not able to feel love and, and be there for ourselves, okay? So that's a big problem. I see it all the time on my Facebook group. Women ask questions where they are not already in love with themselves. They feel horrible about themselves. They don't like themselves. They're home alone and they're miserable. And they're hoping, they're online hoping to find a man or hoping some man will come back in their life so they will feel good again. And feeling good starts with you feeling good and loving you. If you can't stand to be alone and by yourself, you know, like by yourself, quarantine, anything like that, don't get me wrong, no person is an island. We all need to, you know, get out and be around other people. But you got to love you first. You got to be so in love with yourself. And I'm going to talk more about that. Okay, here's the next one. Love fuels your life, not fear. Not fear. So I'm afraid of growing old and being alone. Therefore, I want to get a husband and get married. 
I'm not gonna lie, that was a big part of why I wanted to be married. I did not wanna walk into old age alone. I was already way down that road, knowing it's gonna happen one day. That was one of the reasons, but ultimately I knew that if God's plan for me was to walk that road alone, I was gonna do it. And I was gonna do it with my head held high and with a lot of loving relationships in my life. If it wasn't gonna be a man, it was gonna be something else, someone else, other people, as it should be. It should not just be this man. So you wanna make sure that love is fueling everything you're doing in your life. This is how you reconnect to your feminine energy, is that we're not looking for this person to make us feel this way. We're finding it within. You're finding it within. So, just side note, every super huge mistake <laughs> I've made in my life, from losing a pet to an accident, to a dear pet of mine dying under circumstances that I, and I don't have children, so I'm talking about my pets, but he died under circumstances I was less than happy with. I have regrets. I mean, I think you're always gonna have regrets. Loss of health and loss of money. I can, I can go back and name each of those things and tell you where I stopped listening to myself and I did what I thought a man would appreciate. And every time I did, it turned into a pumpkin at midnight. I either lost money, lost my health, or had a pet die. You do things in order to get someone's approval and love. Karma and God is not okay with that, okay? Karma and God are not okay with it. I would go into what these things are but I would cry. <laughs> I'll tell you about one of them though. I had a contractor that I knew was, I, I'm a smart business person. I knew he was FOS. He wanted more money from me, but I was seeking approval. And I went to a man and I said, I don't know. He wants like $14,000 more to do this. The guy told me, you are too hard on people, Adrian. You don't trust people. Why can't you trust people? You're just too hard on them. And I said, oh my God, I am. I am a hard ass. Aren't we all? This is part of being a woman. We're very critical. We can see flaws. It's part of our DNA. It's what makes us good at things. But I wanted to please that man, so I forked that guy over my money. Never saw him again. Never saw him again. I went under the knife because a man told me to and end up having a terrible surgery. I lost a pet because I left him at home because I thought this guy was gonna break up with me and I had to go be with him and his dog. It's all BS. You see, don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't sacrifice what you feel is no, in no is true and love in you to let fear make you do things that you don't wanna do. I've had women take trips, sell their house, do all sorts of crazy stuff for, to go chase after a man or make a man happy. You are here to be happy first. The man and everybody else, even your children, come second. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Being selfish is not a bad thing. Now, I'm not talking about neglect your children or neglect your relationships, but you gotta put yourself first, ladies. You gotta reclaim your feminine energy, get back on top of your pedestal, and feel like the goddess you are. I could keep telling more stories, but I'm gonna stop. <laughs> now, a lot of us end up distressing our relationships. We end up distressing them I believe some of us have an inner saboteur that we actually want to ruin our relationships because, you know, it's about trust. It's about being vulnerable. And it's so much easier to just find something wrong with a guy and ruin it. It is so much easier. And a lot of us are doing it without even knowing. I, again, I hear it all the time at my free group, I Heart Love Academy. Not a day goes by that a girl doesn't make a post where, <laughs> where, I'm just like, she's, she's killing the relationship. Here's the big word. I'm disappointed. 
I'm so disappointed. Disappointment is your own belief that an outcome should turn out a certain way. Also known as control, right? I want this to be this way. I'm disappointed. And you tell the person, I'm disappointed. That's what parents say to children. It's a very parental word, right? So I want you to begin to notice where you're disappointed or where your beliefs, beliefs can be good or bad, where your fears and where your judgments about a situation are actually making you do and say things that otherwise your inner girl, you know, she is a feeling creature. She can think, don't get me wrong, you're going to always be able to think, but you feel, you feel, you see, and you experiment with this feeling. So at the end of the day, and this, I know I'm making a big leap right here. At the end of the day, you choose your thoughts. When you choose your thoughts, you have a feeling. You get a feeling. So if you're like, I know he's going to leave me. I know this is shady. I know he asked for this, you know, some story, some judgment, some belief. Okay. And maybe it's even true. Maybe it's even right. But you can choose what you're thinking about it. Now, I'm not saying go, go choose some, you know, off the wall feeling, you know, it can't be all rainbows and sunshine and unicorns. But I want you to begin to, as you step into your feminine energy, I want you to begin to experiment with what if this could feel, what if I wanted to feel, you know, excited about this? Or what if I wanted to feel curious about this? Or what is this here to teach me? How can I learn from this before I just shut it down? And next, move on, red flag. Those are actually not even allowed on my group. When girls say that, we mute them for 24 hours because we do not want you to have the mentality of amputation. You are here to learn. You're not here to just keep amputating and going next. You don't learn anything if you do. I want you to be curious know your boundaries, know your values. That's the first thing I went over, but be curious. What am I here to learn? How can I do this differently? All right. <laughs> you have power over the thoughts you choose. You really, really do. And if you change what you're thinking, you will change how you feel. It's that simple. Take some habit though. The last one is getting attention. A lot of women are trying really hard to get attention in ways that, you know, devalue you or you're going to get the wrong type of attention. But I want you to be okay with getting attention the right way with your feminine energy. Now, a couple of exercises that I teach everyone to do, I want you to do them with me right now if you can, is we get you back into your feminine energy body. And a lot of us are kind of numbed up, including myself. There, there are parts of my body that even, even today I touch them. I can't really feel them because there's the parts of me that are still healing. You know? So one of the things I'd like you all to do is just maybe touch, touch your face, tap it lightly and tap around your, your mouth, your face, your forehead, your head, and just say, this is my head, like this is my face. Like I can feel my muscles smiling, right, right? I can feel my chest expanding with breath. Just take a moment, get into your body. I can feel my tummy filling up with air. Good, good. We're getting you back inside. Raise your shoulders up, drop them down. Ah, good. I want you to go a little deeper, a little lower. I want you to think about your birth canal. I want you to see if you can't relax to the point of allowing it to widen. So you're creating space for a man to fill with his energy. You're creating space there. 
and just go ahead and allow yourself to relax there. Allow your little bottom, your little butt cheeks to spread out. Be wide, be wide, go ahead. Let that energy open up down there and create space. That's where you receive from a man in your body energetically. You've gotta create space for him to fill that place up. Now, how do you all feel? Just tell me in the comments section, how are you feeling right now? I would love to hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone said they actually like to sit with their legs uncrossed, right? And you feel relaxed and calm, congratulations, you're in your body. And when you just do this exercise, and you might start to feel a little tingly, you might start to feel a little turned on, perfectly feminine feeling to feel, all right? perfect way to feel. What if you could walk around feeling kind of sexy and turned on and vulnerable and guys are just everywhere you look, they're looking at you and sending you arrows. How amazing would that feel and be? Right? Right. Live your life there. Live your life in this place. Calm, no anxiety. Isn't it wonderful? Now, this is where I, I want you to begin to practice, like before you go to the supermarket, before you go out with your friends, practice this. Get into your body and receive arrows from men. Now, the first guys that are going to look your way are going to be the guys that are the closest in your energy that you would think is acceptable to talk to, okay? I don't know why it works that way, but they're going to shoot you an arrow I actually had a guy, uh, I was walking towards him and he was, walk he was walking towards me and he goes, nice ass. And I was like, how does he know if my ass is nice? He, it's back there, but whatever. I was like, mm. <laughs> you just accept it. Then you get more and more men sending you arrows and just accept them. You don't have to go to the hotel with them. Just accept them. All right. So we're going to take Q and A now. Ah, attention. Give yourself attention. Give yourself as much attention as you can. Give yourself attention. All right, all right. Give yourself attention. Good. Let's take some Q&A, girls. You did great. You, you, you stayed with me. Um, Brittany probably has Q&A all lined up. And I'll take your questions. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, Brittany. All right. Thank you. Uh, Alex Love says, how my man of five years told me he would marry me if I did everything he said. What does that mean and should I take him seriously? So my first question for you is, how does that feel? If a man says, I will love you, I will marry you, if that's conditional, right? And how does something conditional feel? Now, it doesn't mean this guy's a bad guy. In his world, this is probably what his, how his parents were with him, right? She says, I feel horrible. Go deeper with me, Alex Love. What does horrible feel like? So, for example, if a man said that to me, I would say, oh, I feel, I feel like I'm in jail. <laughs> I feel constrained. I feel like I'm on a tightrope that I have to walk a tightrope to get love and marriage. And I don't want, I don't feel like that's the way I want to have a marriage. I don't, I don't like that. I don't want that. I want a man. Don't say I want you. I want a man who loves me and wants to claim me and hold me in his arms and walk into the sunset together. You see, that's how I feel. Huh? Right. You're not so sure about him anymore. Have that in your energy. Have that in your vibe. Yeah, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells, exactly. Ooh, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. I, I want a relationship that feels loving and warm, okay? That's how you feel. Good job. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Libertarian said, I'm a single mom who is with a wonderful guy who tells me he'd marry me tomorrow if it weren't for my daughter's father. 
He's afraid her dad will interfere with her life, with our lives. Her dad never calls. How do I handle this? Well, my gut tells me if it's, he's kind of creating this. Um, he's creating this argument, okay? And to you, I would say, oh, marrying you tomorrow sounds amazing, yet, you know, I really want a husband that, okay, you agree. I want a husband that, or I want a marriage that, I don't know if, if my husband did come around, that we'd handle it. I want a marriage that whatever's going to come our way, whether it's exes, cancer, COVID, whatever it is, we are going to handle it and we know we're going to handle it. Maybe that's the love and marriage I want, but it feels so good to be with you and it feels so good if we could fix this and just leave it there. Very warm, very inviting and see what he does. Just begin to see what he does. I hope that helped you, Libertarian. Uh, Julie said, how do you stay in feminine energy in an argument? Oh boy, that's a tough one. When you're in an argument with a guy, you're getting triggered like crazy. So uh, one of the one of the best things you can do, and, and I have to tell you, I'm studying so much John Gottman right now, and I really recommend him, um, you know, is before the argument even happens, there's this thing called the startup. And if the startup starts negative, like within the first three minutes, the conversation is doomed. So one of the best advice I can give you is pay attention to how it starts up, that harsh startup he talks about. And if it starts up harsh, I want you to already be aware that statistically this conversation is doomed, we're gonna argue. And I want you to take a few moments and just tell your guy, say, you know, I'm just already feeling real flustered and triggered and, and I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna hear you and I wanna listen. I want you to go take a few moments if you can, just say, I just need a minute to myself, if you can. Go remind yourself of 10 things. Write them down if you need to. 10 things you really value about your partner. I value that my partner is clean. I value that my partner has a great work ethic. I value that my partner is always on time. Whatever it is, come up with 10 of them and keep them. Go over them in your mind. And you're gonna get your, yourself adjusted back to this place of I value you. I value this relationship. And you're gonna go into it with a whole new heart space. Instead of head space, heart space. And you'll be able to listen and take your time. Go slow. Feminine energy is slow. You know, it's not like this. It's slow. Okay, take your time. I hope that helps. Okay. Sinead says, how do I get past general chat on online dating and make some dates? Is it okay to message first on an online date? Um, so I have an entire program called Fem Tools for Dating. I cannot recommend it enough. It comes with a VIP library. It comes with, um, you know, it's several, it's, I think it's like a day or something of class, but it's a long class. And I go over everything A to Z, how to do this. So, um, okay, is it okay to message? I think it's okay to send a like. If you're in Bumble, you have to message first, but then when they write you back, get, I do this like kind of one, two, three thing where you let the guy know, hi, you know, it feels so great to talk to you. Oh, I noticed that in your profile, you really love, you know, water skiing or you something where you've read about his profile and it would just feel wonderful to connect more. What do you think? You're putting the ball in his court from that place onward, all right? So, Next, you move on to, you chat a little bit. Oh, a phone call would feel lovely. What do you think? If he does not call you, chat one more round with him on a different day. If he does not call you then, you then say, you know, chatting with you has felt amazing. I really enjoyed it. Yet, 
I'm really looking for a regular dating relationship and it seems all we're doing is chatting. And it's important to connect on the phone to really get to know someone. So I'm gonna be moving on. And the guy goes, wait, wait. And that's when, if he does not call you, or if he tried to guilt you or torture you or harm you in some way via chat, you know what type of guy you got on your hand, block him immediately, move on. I've learned, I learned from this man, you see? Thank you, Stephanie. She's saying she really likes femme tools and it helped her with dating, thank you. Okay, we're moving on to Aline. She said, my ex and I got back together 1.5 years his idea. Five days later, he broke up with me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We had an intense fight when it happened. And ever since, I've been doing everything not to pursue. What can I do? Hmm. This is such a strange thing, don't you think? So my first thing to you is, I'm so sorry. This is devastating. Um, Aline... I want you to tell me here in chat, how does it feel? How does it feel that get back together and then five days later, you have a big argument? How does it feel? Because this is something that happens sometimes. I have a popular program called the ABCs to get him back. I have a long list of women that it has helped. Go to my Instagram page. I've got testimonial on top of testimonial. It works. The problem is I get people back together, but it something ends up happening sometimes that I have no control over. Sometimes the person didn't really, you know, do all her tools and she went right back into her old way of doing things. Um, but sometimes the guy shows you again what he's about. So it's almost like you get this do over and the same type of crap happens again. Then you have to ask yourself, huh, this happened again with him. This keeps happening again. What is the universe telling me? I always tell everyone, the universe talks to you like little butterfly wings on your face. You get a little hint, right? Or you get a baseball bat to the face or hitting a brick wall. This is how the universe communicates. So you need to ask yourself, have I just gotten the butterfly tickle from the universe saying, don't pursue this? Or am I getting hitting the brick wall right now? Okay, so I'll tell you girls, a big one for me, and it's happened several times, before everything is really starting to go to pot, I have giant wave tsunami dreams. And I talked earlier in this live stream about how I lost a dear pet of mine uh, because I was trying to fix things with this guy and I rushed out of the house. I left him home alone and he got tangled up in some laundry and choked to death. It's a very sad story. And one of the things that I, you know, I really failed to do in that moment, sorry, it's still really hard. One of the things I failed to do was do what was right for me in that moment. Interestingly enough, about two weeks before this happened, I had a tsunami dream where a giant wave was coming and I was walking my little dog and before the wave hit, I picked him up and I put him under the jacket I was wearing to protect him and keep him close with me during the wave crash. And I really think that was the universe's way of telling me, watch out, it's coming. So I want you to just begin to look at the, the, the things that are happening in your life and how you're feeling and really find out what is important to you to have in this relationship with this man. And can he really do it, right? Can he really do this, okay? Sorry to get dark on you guys, some of these stories, but a lot of you write me and say that you learn the most from my stories. And again, I just don't want you to go through what, I'm go what I've gone through to get here. I want you to be able to listen to the universe. Another one I'll tell you, side note, uh, a lot of you know I had to have a, a, a corrective surgery for Graves' eye disease. 
Um, and, you know, it wasn't life or death to get this surgery. And the night before the surgery, okay, first time I went to go have the surgery, the doctors kept coming in, the nurse anesthesia kept coming in, and they kept going, which eye is the, the eye with this? And I was like, that's it, I'm out. I felt they were incompetent. That's why I left, okay? Jeff got mad at me, it was a whole big deal. Second time I went to get this surgery done, it was scheduled. Out of nowhere, we got a massive snowstorm. And, and every, the hospital, nobody, I couldn't drive to get the surgery. You see how the universe was talking to me? And I wasn't listening. And I wanted to, you know, do it. I thought that I, you know, my partner would be proud of me, whatever. I did it, huge mess. I've had something like 11 corrective surgeries since then. It has been a nightmare. Girls, listen to me. Do not do things to make a man proud of you or to be fond of you. You end up sacrificing yourself in the process, okay? All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sinead says, hi, Sinead. I've talked to you before. How do I get past general? Oh, no, no. We talked about that, the general online. Um, let's see here. Okay, just getting caught up. Oh, it's eyes to see. That's right. Sorry. How do I deal with a guy who mainly talks about himself? All right. It's time for Adrian Everhart's School of Acting, School of Authentic Acting, also known as, um, <laughs> just, I just lost it in my mind. Um, method, method acting. So I studied method acting. It was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Uh, I recommend all of you is if you can take a method acting class online or if you can study. I studied with a guy who actually was taught by Jeff Goldblum. Um, he was, he's been in a lot of television shows and movies and stuff like that. Fantastic teacher named Burgess Jenkins. And boy, will you learn so much when you take method acting because something that I otherwise never allowed myself to do with a man was act bored. And if a guy is talking about himself all the time, I'm gonna get bored. Yeah. And he's gonna go, what? What, am I boring you? And you're gonna go, I am a little bored. <laughs> I really am, right? That's how I feel. He'll go, okay, so I'm boring you? Yeah, I mean, it feels wonderful to be on a date and it, it feels good to sit down and connect and talk to each other. But I feel like mostly I just hear about your life and your life is interesting and I enjoy getting to know you. Yet, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling it's just too much. So yeah, I'm a little bored. And you own it and you just own it and he might go fine. You know, I don't want to be with you and go, okay. <laughs> right? What's your, what is your alternative? If you don't let this man know you're bored, it's how I really feel. I'm not going to be rude about it. Like, shut up. You're boring me. <laughs> you're going to choose your words carefully. But she said, this is over text. Stop texting. First of all, what are you doing texting this much? You need to get on the phone. You need to make it real. Do not have texting relationships with people. Girls, I cannot recommend it enough. I know it's there. I know it's so easy. I know you get a dopamine rush every time your phone chimes and it's that guy texting you. It is not real. It is not real. It, it will feel real. It will feel like letter writing, but you have to be face to face with a person. You have to breathe the same air, okay? You have to breathe the same air. Okay, someone's name I can't pronounce says, what if he's <clears throat> laid back and I'm pushy? Let me get a little sip of drink here. So he's laid back and you're pushy. Why do I have a feeling that has something to do with sex? Message me if that's, if, if, if you're really talking about something sexually or like making dates and plans like that. So ultimately with a guy like that, you just have to hold out. You have to hold out. You have to just see what he does and don't do anything, okay?
okay? Just don't do anything, all right? Give him the time and the space and the boredom because he's actually thinking you're gonna do something, okay? All right. Eyes to see, so this is the last. I've got one more coming up here and then no more, you guys. Eyes to see says, how do I deal? Okay, we did that one. How to deal with a guy who talks mainly about himself. Bored. Hmm. <laughs> um, oh, okay, hold on. I think I can see it. Lisa, we can't see your question. We cannot see your question. Hey girls, thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, live stream with me. I love doing q and I love teaching you how to get into your soft feminine body. Please stop for a moment and like my video. Just give it a quick thumbs up. I've got over 400 viewers right now and I've got about 100 likes. What if I got 400 likes? <laughs> I'm just wondering, can we make it happen? Oh, Lisa, fabulous question. How do I get my guy to be open with physical touch? And by open, you mean, I want, come touch me more, come cuddle me more, come give me more of that stuff I want, right? Okay, and, and okay, she says heart, heart, heart. So I'm on, I'm on the same page with you. So um, physical touch is a big one for me too. Uh, <laughs> and I, you know, it makes us feel good. It kind of calms us down. It makes me feel connected. Um, I am so blessed to have a man who uh, likes to give me a foot massage. Uh, it's, he is so wonderful and, 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 and it will just calm me down, will get me centered again. I can calm myself down. I can get myself centered down. But boy, do I love it that he just wants to do that and touch me. So how did that happen? You know, how did I, you know, it didn't happen on the first date. So you got to reward him anytime he touches you and it feels good. When I first met Jeff, I actually complained to him. He hugged too much. He did. I swear to God, the guy had to hug me. We're passing in the hall. He wanted to hug. In the kitchen, he wanted to hug. Can you believe you're hearing this from me? I actually criticized him because he wanted to hug too much. <laughs> So whenever he does touch you, uh, just just melt. Just melt like hot chocolate. Just melt. You know, put a piece of chocolate on your tongue, let it sit there, and just let it melt. And so whenever he touches you, you just mm, make a sound. Or, oh, it feels so good. And she says, I want to moan and do it. Just go, mmm. His ears will hear this and he'll start to react. So I have a video on my YouTube page. And if you just go to my YouTube channel, it's, it's right up there and I'm wearing sunglasses, I'm out on my porch. And I give you all these sexy tips to drive your guy crazy or something like that. And I talk about noises you can make with your mouth. And so then you begin to incorporate those same noises into like everyday life with him. And just before he knows it, he's just feeling this around you all the time. So noises, also the beginning of this, we did an exercise where you open your body, you open your energy, that's what you wanna do, all right? And somebody says one of her favorite videos, please post it in the comments if you know what video it is. I love it when you girls help me out. All right, so I think that's it. I think I saw one sneak in she said, I have pelvic floor disorder and it makes sex uncomfortable. Um, it's difficult on us uh, emotionally and she's been in physical therapy. So um, I've actually helped women with this uh, in my coaching because one of the things that I teach you to do is relax the vagina muscles. And you probably have a dilator. You probably have something that's helping you with uh, physical uh, therapy with that, I'm assuming. But until then, I want you to begin to learn to feel pleasure however you can in other ways. You see, yes, she uses dilators, excellent. Begin to practice that energy of opening and concentrating, dropping down into your body. I like to start with the top of my head, tap the top of your head, feel your head, 
talk to it, feel your forehead, your face, your neck, your bosom, your stomach. Keep tapping and talk to it and say, this is my arm. This is what my arm feels like to me. Pinch it, give it a little rub, a little stroke, feel it, okay? And get into your body and begin to relax that place. Breathe into it, send air into it and allow it to widen. And of course, this is a slow process for the for girls who have any sort of pelvic floor um, disorder. I mean, it's tough. A lot of you want to be mothers one day and, and there's the, you, you gotta make it happen somehow. Even doctor's appointments are incredibly painful. So be slow with yourself. Love yourself right where you are. If it's discouraging for you guys, it's not gonna help you. You gotta go at this with love, okay? You gotta go at this with love and say, baby, this is how my body is. This is just where I'm at and love it. I love every little tight part of myself. I love every little part that won't let go. A lot of us are, you know, a lot of women can't even have orgasms, you know, with their partner because we're so tensed up and tightened. You know, it's a very similar thing, okay? <laughs> I'm really glad to help you, and I, I do understand that condition. And don't worry, start where you're at, love where you're at. Trust your body. Trust your body knows what it's doing. Girls, I can't take any more questions. I gotta go. I've been with you for over an hour. All right, Naylin. I'm going to answer your question in the chat below. And if for any of you I didn't get to your question, just ask below in the comments, okay? And I'll answer it. I'm so happy and honored to be part of your life. Ladies, please give me thumbs up. I'm almost at 200 likes for this video. I would love to get more likes. I would love to hit 200. I would be the most I've ever had in one video. Lisa, you're welcome. Girls, in over my head, um, eyes to see, Aline, uh, Sinead, Julie, uh, Libertarian, and Alex, thank you so much for being vulnerable. Thank you all you girls for chatting. I've been seeing all your chats pop up. Thank you, thank you so much for being with me during this video live stream. Please take a moment. Oh, we have 200 likes. You girls are amazing. And uh, thank you so much for being part of my life and, and giving me a place to share my story and help you heal as well. And in the comments, talk about how you're getting in touch with your feminine energy, that soft feminine energy. Men are drawn to it. Men desire it because they feel like a man when they're in that energy, all right? They feel good. You know what it, how good it feels when you feel like a woman and you feel comfortable and soft and like a girl. And a man also feels amazing when he's in his masculine energy, okay? And the relationship gets balanced. All right, everybody, much love. Brittany, thank you, thank you, thank you for staying with me during this chat. And thanks for everybody coming back around. Much love to you, mwah. See you soon, bye-bye.